the exchange rate. Yeah, sometimes the exchange rate that they, that they use is not the official exchange rate. They determine the yeah, rate. Just, yeah, um, well, yeah, you know, it works both ways. You know, there's countries that have complained about um, how exorbitant the Nigerian visa fees are. And we've had to bring them down in certain cases and that they haven't been reciprocal. You know, I don't want to mention the countries, but we have a lot of that. And uh, in a number of countries also uh, uh, outside, just how much uh, people pay for Nigerian visas. And in the context of our um, the, the Presidential uh, Enabling Business Environment Council that's chaired by the Vice President, you know, these are some of the things that we're working at. Uh, also, you know, on our side, you know, some of the, the visa fees, the time we take, and also some of the treatment. Um, there are also a lot of complaints about how people are treated at our Nigerian uh, 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 embassies and missions abroad. And it's one of the things that gives me sleepless nights, you know, trying to, um, you know, to improve the services that we also deliver. And I've met uh, on a number of occasions with the Minister of Interior and with the Controller General of, uh, of Immigration, you know, what we can do to, to, to improve. So, you know, I'm not, again, justifying the treatment of Nigerians in the embassies here, but what I'm saying is that, you know, it's very often a challenge in countries. But it's good to know that you're aware of, of this problem. Of course, we're not just aware, we're working very hard to, There's a second to, part to, to, that to address the situation. Nigerians themselves, too, when we go to our embassies abroad, it's almost like they turn many of them back. So people don't know what to expect. They don't report to an embassy when they get to those countries. Is that supposed to be the case? When they go to when embassies... When they go to all countries... For, for instance, if we go to maybe UK mm. and Nigerians want to go to the embassy to make inquiries or go there because this mm. is our embassy, mm. some of them say the experiences are very horrific. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, um, there are no, I mean, people haven't reported to us about those kinds of things here. The kind of complaints that um, I've received and, uh, and we tend to receive, you know, here is, um, you know, the delays in issuing of visas and in some cases the reasons why visas have been denied. And, and, you know, I try even myself, I even say sometimes that, you know, as Minister of Foreign Affairs, that I'm being turned into a, 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 a travel <laughs> a, a, a agent helping people half of the time, you know. But, um, okay. pardon me, we'll need a challenge. Brief, but yes. we'll come back to this in a moment. Yeah, okay. Don't go away. Welcome back to Sunrise. I didn't know you've got a Yes, a so you, you said something, Honourable Minister, about you've not gotten this report. I'll start with my, my brother who went to the UK to deliver and he was given a shirt to give mm. to a relative mm. of the other person that gave him the shirt. Mm. And he was told he has to go and fix an appointment. So he asked, if I have to fix an appointment to deliver a shirt, if I have an emergency, what do I do? And he was told he needs to fix an appointment. That's my brother. But see this. Eniga... Akimboy says, I visited the Nigerian embassy in Rome and Swiss. I was not allowed to see any official. I was denied access. And he's a citizen of Nigeria. How, how, do, you, how do you expect Nigerians to feel when they can't get access to their own embassy? Yeah, I mean, I'm hearing that for the first time, um, and I'm actually quite surprised. But what we are trying to do, as I said, you know, we are aware of a lot of complaints vis-a-vis um, -vis a number of embassies around the, the world. So um, there's a project I've initiated, and uh, hopefully it will be up and running very soon, a call center, you know, um, for any Nigerian anywhere in the world that um, that's call having, Nigeria? Uh, having any issues. Yeah, okay. uh, well, yeah a call center um, that will 24 hours, uh, seven days a week, um, and, and, and complain or ask for assistance. You know, and I think that this will go some way to addressing a lot of these issues because I think it's important that each embassy and each embassy official knows that anything they do or say um, is going to get back to headquarters and uh, that there is some oversight. And I think that this uh, hopefully will make them know that they are service providers and will be a lot more professional. I mean, we, we call all the time. Um, for our staff to understand that they are service providers yeah. and are there to serve. And, um, and we have zero tolerance uh, for shoddy behavior okay. and unprofessionalism. Let me bring this in here. Mm. What's Nigeria's foreign policy thrust? I mean, some people are 
I've talked about it, how they're confused here. But just to clarify, what's Nigerian foreign policy thrust? If I may add, Tom usually asks that question also saying, look, what is in it for us? Yeah, I mean, yeah, which I think um, is what we should be looking at. What are we trying to get out of it? You know, there's the academic side of things. You know, we can write any number of papers on foreign policy direction, and we have a lot of people who do that. But we also have to be practical. And as you say, what do we want? What is in, uh, what is in it for us? And, and we have a very focused uh, foreign policy uh, initiative, which is... Um, predicated around Mr. President's priorities for the country, you know. So in these four years that he's going to be there, he's identified his priorities, security, um, you know, anti-corruption, governance, and the economy. So our foreign policy is designed to support that process. So on the security side, um, we made a clear uh, decision to engage with countries to buy in to support us in our security challenges. And, um, and we've been very, very successful uh, in that. For instance, you would have seen that the US that has always refused to sell weapons to us that we've needed, you know, uh, President Trump has uh, delivered on his, pres on his promise to Mr. President to do that. So we've got the whole world to buy into our security uh, issues and working very closely with us, sharing intelligence and all that. So that's been a real success. Our neighbors are fully on board. And, and you know, it was an existential threat that we were facing. You know, on, on anti-corruption, we've been able to put it at the top of the international agenda, and it was not always there. You know, for a lot of major industrialized countries, you know, corruption was a third world thing, and they never, you know, put any pressure on their financial institutions to, uh, to work with uh, developing countries, restitution, and so forth. But that's happening now, and the UN itself has come up with a resolution after uh, uh, um, 10 years of negotiations on illicit flow of funds and so forth. And then on the economy, that's extremely important you know getting the confidence again to uh, to invest in our efforts to diversify the economy and all these have been foreign ex foreign um, uh, um, uh, initiatives okay. that have delivered those uh, those goals all right that's where we have to leave it at this point mr. Geoffrey Nyama Minister of Foreign Affairs thank you for coming on this morning and good to see you the pleasure is mine thank you all right so there you go that's the program today thank you all for watching we'll see you tomorrow I'm Chamberlain also well, thank you for your comments and mails as well. Sorry, we couldn't <laughs> take them, especially on Ted Fund. I'm Malk Bayogun Yusuf. And I'm Neil Tag. We have a good day. The views and opinions expressed by guests on this program are those of the maker and do not necessarily reflect the views, opinions, and endorsement of Channels Television.